The Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro prove that Google's gotten really serious about its smartphones. These beautifully refined designs show two flagships that will stop at nothing on their quest to be the best Android phones you can buy. And trust me, they're pretty close to that title. Both phones impress with their 50 megapixel cameras, offering stunning photos, add in new features like photo on blur, cinematic blur, and active stabilization, and you got yourself a content creation device that rivals even the iPhone 14. But what else do these phones have to offer? Let's find out on my Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro review. I want to take a moment to really admire the refresh design on the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. Google really refined what it introduced last year with the Pixel 6 series. It comes in three colors, black, white, and the new lemongrass colorway, which is a sort of yellowy green floral springy look. The Pixel 7 Pro also looks a lot like its predecessor with a 6.7 inch curved display with the glass that kind of just melts into the frame a little bit, adding this bezel-less look. The Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro both use OLED displays, measuring 6.3 and 6.7 inches respectively. While the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro were decently bright in their own right, the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro have almost a thousand nits of brightness in our testing, which is great for outdoor visibility. Cameras are where the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro get really interesting. Both feature a 50 megapixel main shooter that does all the heavy lifting, alongside a 12 megapixel ultra wide. The Pixel 7 Pro here adds a 48 megapixel telephoto sensor with a 5x optical zoom. That beats both the Galaxy S22 and the iPhone 14 Pros 3 times. We previously crowned the iPhone 14 Pro Max as the best camera phone you can buy, but I honestly think the Pixel 7 Pro does a good job of giving it a run for its money. Just take a look at this picture of this broken down Volkswagen Beetle. The images look nearly identical with great color and great dynamic range. Heading inside this appropriately very autumn scene is another example that these phones are on equal footing. It's again really hard to tell the difference between the two pictures except the iPhones is a little bit brighter thanks to Apple's new photonic engine. Like I said earlier, the Pixel 7 Pro's telephoto zoom tops out at 5 times optical while the iPhone 14 Pro tops out at 3 times. So comparing them directly is a little bit difficult because of the different zoom levels. Here's where the Pixel 7 Pro falls a little behind in my opinion. The colors are a little bit flat, they're a little bit dull, a little bit lifeless, whereas they're more vibrant in the iPhone 14 Pro's image. I really wanted to test the upgraded night sight on the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro this year. And you can see the difference between the iPhone 14 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro. The iPhone's a little bit brighter with a little bit stronger detail, but the Pixel 7 Pro offers a lot of rich colors. One of the new features this year is Photo on Blur, which does what you think it would. In this before shot of a bookshelf in my house, you can barely make out the titles on some of the spines. After Photo on Blur, some of those become a lot more legible. Not all of them, but a lot more of them, in such that I could read what most of them say. Up until now, many would have agreed that if you care about recording video on a smartphone, you need to go Apple. Part of that comes down to two of the new features this year. One of those is cinematic blur, which if you pay attention to what Apple's been doing with cinematic mode, you'll already know what this is. The second new feature is called active stabilization. It's a lot like the iPhone 14's action mode, which adds some extreme stabilization to your otherwise shaky videos. Both the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro use the same Tensor G2 chipset, which is a significant upgrade over last year. Not only does Tensor G2 perform better in our benchmarks like Geekbench 5 and Adobe Premiere Rush, but it just feels better to use in day-to-day -day usage. Battery life was a major concern with the Pixel 6 series, and I'm happy to say that it seems to have gotten better this year, especially with the Pixel 7 Pro. After I took it out for a full day of photography, gaming, watching videos, and web browsing, I still had a lot more juice left over at the end of the day than I would have with the Pixel 6 Pro. The Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro both ship with Android 13. Out of the box and on the surface, it feels a lot like you would find on the Pixel 6 or maybe even an earlier Pixel. But when under the hood, you start to see the optimizations with Tensor G2, as well as the new features that I mentioned earlier like photo and blur and cinematic blur. At $899, the Pixel 7 Pro offers some serious competition to the likes of the Galaxy S22 Ultra or the iPhone 14 Pro. And at $599, the Pixel 7 offers flagship performance for hundreds less than the competition. I can honestly talk about the cameras all day, but I'll save you that. The pictures that the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro are just simply stunning, most of them. I'm also amazed by the fact that the Pixel 7 Pro keeps pace with the iPhone 14 Pro, which is one of the best camera phones you can buy. 
but I expect no less from Google. If you'd like to read the full written reviews of the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro and find out more about these phones, be sure to check them out on tomsguide.com.